What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is Irate Reviews, the show where I go over a comic book, its art, its story, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something to go back to the shop for or not. I'm going to be talking about Detective Comics 946. So Detective Comics 946 continues along the Victim Syndicate arc, and this is really about the failures of Batman overall as a, a hero. So the unintended consequences, the collateral damage, if you will, of all of his endeavors around the city. So every single member of this victim syndicate is a result of a failed Batman attempt to save the people of Gotham. So when we start off in the story, what we see is actually kind of a rehash or a reflash back to when Tim Drake and Batman were first talking about the Belfry. This was after the Court of Owls kind of experience, and what we found is that they hid this bell, this bell that rang as justice across Gotham. And what he does is he basically looks to Tim for perspective, because he doesn't necessarily see the city in the same way. When Tim Drake looks at this city, when the Red Robin takes a, a real vantage over what can be possible, he's looking at different situations where individual characters can basically be anywhere where they need to be. Instead of choosing where they are going to be, you know, which calls to take, they can take them all. There's bat medics that would be available all over the city. They'd have repositories where people could go and be safe, and they could protect Gotham like never before. And Batman realizes the shortcomings of his own foresight. He doesn't understand how that could potentially be possible. And that's why Red Robin, Tim Drake, says, you know what, I'm always going to be here for that. And given the situation that we understand now, that's really hurting. You know, it's just like, oh, but Tim's not around anymore. Mr. Oz has him in a cage. But Batman thinks he's dead. Everybody thinks he's dead. Then all of a sudden, Batman's at the Tompkins Center where he's finding Azrael, who's fighting off this first victim. And then we kind of clash in conflict. But then we'll bounce back to the Belfry where Stephanie Brown is still talking with this kind of mud-faced Tim Drake. You know, out of the essence of Clayface, a Red Robin has been created for her to converse with. And she understands that he's a program. It's not real. She wishes that it was the real one. And this is something that she lays it all out on the line. She understands that she was never really meant to be in this kind of lifestyle. She was the daughter of the Clue Master. She was the daughter of a third-rate villain. And that got dragged into this situation. And you know what? When she started fighting a spoiler, she felt like it was the right thing to do. It felt good. It felt like they were doing something to help society. But now they haven't stopped to think whether they've actually done any good. And this is the kind of mindset where she's at. You know, the victim syndicate didn't come to threaten her. They were just like, hey... We're sorry what happened, you know, and they were wondering why she fought, why she fought beside Batman, why she did what she did. And she started thinking about that, which is why, as she's been on the bench, she's kind of had this attitude, this conflict, this confrontation with Batman himself. As we bounce back over to the actual action going down, we see a bunch of different stuff. So you've got Clayface kind of interacting. There's this great little mural with, like, you know, peace and for across the world kind of stuff. And then he interacts with, you know, Mudface, and he gives her his bracelet. The one that allows him to retain his form, his human form. And she converts back and it's just like, I realize that this is kind of like this trap thing. But for those people that were worried that Clayface was going to become a villain again, this just means that, man, that dude is a big old softy. <laughs> and it's not just because he's made out of clay. He's just like, he wants to be a good person. And I really see this as an evolution for the Clayface character. And slowly but surely, you know, Batwoman has her conflict against Madame Crow. And there's a bunch of different things. Orphan gets in on the act. Batwing's there. He cures the toxin guy. There's a lot of different things where Batman and his family, his team, are really trying to heal these victims so that, that way they no longer feel the repercussions of the actions of Batman. And when he tries to confront the first victim, that's where he kind of runs afoul of things. But in his Batman fashion, he kind of grips his chin and, you know, he's just like, hey, you know what? This is over. Call the cops. We're going to be perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden a screech goes across the bat comms and it's a pretty spoiler-filled ending. So I'm not really going to talk about it that much. But overall, Batman... This Detective Comics issue, Nine, Detective 946, is really another psychological analysis of Batman as a character. Tom King went in a slightly different direction with Batman number 12, where he kind of went into the darker side of Batman and his own personal conflicts, where this really talks about the actual experience of being Batman and what it means to be that kind of character, what your expectations are, what kind of world do you want to create, and whether you're actually doing the good that you really expect. So it's really kind of another different analysis. They're not mutually exclusive. They're actually kind of complementary. Because as Batman looks inwards, he doesn't have enough time to understand how he pushes things outwards. You know, how he interacts with the people that are around him, the people that mean the most to him, and how it impacts the lives of the people that he tries to help. You know, is he really helping? So this is really a great story. I mean, Eddie Barrows does a really good job on the art. He always does a really good job on the art. But 
the story that James Tynan IV is really telling is super interesting, and I can't wait to see where it goes in 947. Uh, you know, he sent out a tweet a little bit earlier that said that this is really a roller coaster he's been waiting for. He's been waiting for us to get to this point in time to see how people would react to the story that he's telling. And overall, I can't really, I can't really recommend Detective Comics enough. It's probably one of the best. You know, it's it's like top three for what's coming out of DC Rebirth as far as a comic book series. You know, you've got Superman, you've got Detective Comics. Man, they're just they're just so good. They're like neck and neck. It all depends on what kind of week you're talking about, but. Definitely, as far as a bat book, it's number one, and I can't recommend it enough. Definitely go out and grab yourself some Detective 946 and pick up the rest of the run if you haven't had a chance to read it yet. So that's my review of Detective Comics 946, but I want to know what you guys thought too, so hit me up in the comments down below, and we can start that conversation about the psychology and how everything's really interacting and playing out. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe right there to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.